everybody, I'm Bev from Flamingo Toes and I'm super excited to be here with you today on our DIY holiday crafting day. Um, today we are going to make this really cute and cozy um, deer pillow. It's uh, got a stencil design on the front and it's made with flannel so it's really soft and um, it's super easy to do. It might look complicated but um, anybody can make it, I promise. So I want to show you our finished thing and then I want to, uh, let's go over the supplies that you're gonna need. Um, for the stencil, I am using the deer stencil from the Woodland uh, kit. It's a stencil kit and these are so great because they're 12 by 12 so you can do a really big project with them. And there's a ton of different stencils. I don't know if y'all can see that. A ton of different stencils in here. So if the big deer isn't your thing, there's all kinds of cute little, I'm really um, fond of the, there's like a little pine cone one and some little patterned ones. And then this wood slice. I don't know if y'all can see. It's like a little wood slice. It's so cute. So that's what we're going to do for the main deer um, on our pillow. So you'll need this woodland stencil pack. And you'll also need some fabric, and I am using um, plaid flannel that I picked up at Joann's. Um, so you need a half a yard of that, and I'll tell you in just a second how to cut those pieces. We're also going to need the um, Bucilla Riotai kit. That's what we use to make the big, big pom-poms on the corners. Um, so I'll have to show you that in just a sec. You're going to need some folk art multi-surface paint and the awesome thing about multi-surface paint is you can use it on anything um, hence the name multi-surface it's um, but it's great because it's kind of a one-stop thing you can use it on wood you can use it on metal you can use it on fabric and you don't have to add a fabric medium to it to make it washable we just recommend that you wash your fabric first so that you get all that sizing that comes from the manufacturer out and the paint will really soak into the fabric so you'll need the paint, and for the color, I'm using a black, um, hi Diane, uh, you can purchase those things, but we have a, a link for you up at the, um, up at the top that's, that's above the video, and it's kind of a one-stop shop place where, um, all the supplies from Plaid are, um, you're able to purchase from there, and it's an even better deal because if you use the code Flamingo Toes at that on that page or anything really on um, plaid online you'll be able to save 25 percent if you spend 25 dollars so you can get all of your your holiday crafting done uh, your shopping crafting done um, and save some money too which is I'm all for that so so here's the paint you'll need you're also going to need a stencil brush you can use um, for because our stencil is such a big open stencil. You can use a bigger brush. Um, some of the, the little stencils that are detailed like the one Kathy did first thing this morning, you're going to want to use a smaller brush for that. But because we have such a big open area, you can use a nice big stencil brush to get through a lot of that fabric quickly. Um, you'll also need a big chunky yarn. Anything, um, any uh, brand will do and any style really. Um, I just wanted really big full pom-poms on the corners of my pillow so I went with a big chunky one and you just want to get that to match your plaid and you'll need some scissors and thread and a sewing machine. So let's get started. Um, for our flannel, you're going to want to cut um, a 16 by, oh and you'll need a pillow form. I'm sorry I didn't mention that either. So it's a 16 by 16 inch pillow form. You can do it bigger. Um, but I wouldn't go too much smaller with the size of the stencil that we're using. So, to make a really full pillow, here's a trick. You cut your fabric to the exact same size as your pillow form. So if you're using a 16 by 16 inch pillow, you cut your front piece 16 by 16. And that'll make it so that you don't have a lot of extra fabric around the edge and it'll look really nice inside. So you're going to cut your front piece to 16 by 16. And then for the back pieces, you'll cut one 16 by 12 and one 16 by 10. And that is what we're going to do to make the envelope back of the pillow. Um, this is my favorite way to do a pillow. So you just pop it in the pillow form this way, 
and you can um, you don't have to hand sew the opening closed and you can take it out for easy cleaning and the other advantage is you once Christmas is over you can take this off store it in a box really small and then use your pillow form for something for Valentine's Day or spring so no no use buying a ton of pillow forms when you can just change out those pillows so what we're gonna do to start and I've pre-washed my fabric is I'm going to lay the design. I don't know if y'all can see. I put down a little bit of uh, parchment paper on my work surface because I'm painting through fabric. It will soak in just a little bit and you don't want to get any paint on your table. So I've obviously used this, <laughs> um, but here's a little bit better idea of what it looks like. Um, so we're just going to center the stencil on our fabric. And when you're working with plaid, it makes it really easy. You can kind of see where the uh, lines are and make sure it's nice and straight. And I'm going to tape down the edges of my stencil with a little bit of washi tape. I like using washi tape for this because it doesn't leave any, doesn't tear away your stencil when you take it off and it works, holds to your fabric and it just keeps it in place a little bit better as you're moving your stencil around. So, hi Mindy! So we're going to open up our paint and I'm going to add a little bit to this paper plate. It, you don't need a ton, but I will recommend if you are um, making this on a flannel pillow that you do two coats for this. Um, we're not going to do that today because of time. But because the flannel is a porous fabric and it's kind of got a, a little bit bigger weave than some of the other fabrics, it's going to soak in after your first paint. And then you want to let it dry and see where you can see the plaid still coming through and then you'll want to go over it again so that you don't have any of that, any of that coming through. So I'm a swirly stenciler. Um, what you want to do is get some paint on your brush and kind of swirl it around and get most of that paint back off. You don't want a lot of paint on your brush when you stencil because you don't want it bleeding underneath that stencil and that way you have nice crisp lines. So I always start from the outside in. So let me see if I can scooch back here and see. So you want to just do nice big motions through these antlers and I kind of press down with my uh, left hand as I'm stenciling to hold the flannel in place. You're working with a fairly large stencil and a movable fabric underneath and you don't want your fabric shifting around or else your antlers are gonna look a little wonky and we don't want that. So you want to do nice big swirls coming from the outside in. So try and get your um, area covered as well as possible. You, you really don't want to see, I'm going to hold this up so you guys can see, you really don't want to see any of the plaid coming through that paint. Um, so get it, trying to find that balance between getting enough paint on there so that it covers it, but not so much that it bleeds through so you still have your good lines. So we're just going to kind of go through this pretty quick because the last thing you need is to watch me stencil. Um, I will give you a little tip about working with plaids. Um, when you're getting your plaid cut from the fabric store, sometimes they don't do this, um, try and get them to cut along the lines of the plaid. So much, um, so much of plaids isn't on the bolt straight, so you want to just follow these lines as you cut it and make sure that you've measured over once you have, you know, say if it's a 16 inch square, you're going to follow the first line, measure over 16 inches, and then follow the line that's there on the plaid. And that will make sure that your plaid looks nice and straight on your pillow form. You don't want wandering plaids. That's really bad. <laughs> so especially if you're working with a big um, buffalo check or something like that, um, that's where you're going to see it a lot more than if you're working with a smaller plaid like this. Um, and if they don't do that at the fabric store or are willing to cut it that way, then buy just a little bit extra so you can do it at home. Um, so we're just going to work through here. I will recommend, um, I do recommend that even when you get in the middle of this deer, 
that you continue to do this spiral motion with your brush. Um, I don't know if you remember from kindergarten. My grandmother was a kindergarten teacher, so she was quite adamant with us on coloring and things like that. If, if you don't do it all the same way, you're going to see those lines. So if you were coloring and you colored, you know, one direction and then another direction, it did kind of show. Um, same thing with paint and um, fabric. You've got a weave already, so you want to kind of try to keep your paint uh, going on the same way that it went on. In the other section so if you started with a spiral up in the antlers use a spiral to fill in the middle so I'm not going to do all this because it's taking forever so <laughs> but you're getting the gist of it once you are done don't uh, once you're done with your first coat don't take the stencil up um, just let it dry on there give it at least an hour and then come back and look at it you'll see some of the plaid kind of showing through do another good coat on top of it and then you'll have your good coverage just move this and ha ha look magically we have one already done <laughs> yeah that's right Diane you just take a little bit of paint you you dab it off on the plate and then you put it on because you don't want it to bleed through the stencil so that's exactly right so we're working with a different fabric because I didn't have enough of the first fabric but you can see that it looks really cute on almost any plaid you could even do a darker plaid that's got like reds and greens in it. Um, I just recommend switching your paint to go for a cream or a, or a white to, so you have a really good contrast. So just pick a plaid and then pick your paint and make sure your paint will really stand out. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to show you just super fast. I know this isn't a sewing tutorial, <laughs> but I want to show you really fast how to do the bow. Um, for the bow, I just sewed Two, so you cut a piece of fabric two inches long, wide and about 10 inches long. Sorry, I stuttered through that whole thing. So the short sides and the long side, but leave an opening in the long side. Then turn it right side out and press it so that you have like a nice um, pressed edge. Then sew a seam. This is about two to three inches from the ends. So then you can fold so you can kind of see we've got two loose ends and then a fold. So you want to fold your fabric in half to make, so it makes an easy bow. And then it looks really nice too. So I also have another small piece, same width. It was two inches of fabric. I sewed a seam that was a quarter of an inch and then turned it right side out. So then you want to wrap your little piece around the, the bow and then hand sew it so that you have kind of an easy bow to put on his neck. I'm not going to do that on this one because it would take quite a bit of time. But that's how I made the bow. And um, I can explain that further if you would like to. So we have our little guy and now we're going to make the pom-poms. So in the Riotai kit, um, let me scooch this over here. In the Riotai kit, this is really such a super fun kit because it does these wall hangings. Um, and you can also make big pom-poms with it. So in the kit comes two sizes of these little wood um, pieces. I, we're going to use the large board for these um, for these pom-poms. So I'm going to move that so it's not in our way. So you'll have two rubber bands around your board. You're going to take off your rubber bands. And you're going to pull out your yarn. Always pull from the center. Um, that will make it come out nice and easy for you. And you're going to cut six uh, pieces of yarn that are a little bit longer than your board. So we're gonna do that. Have any of y'all seen the Riotai? It's such a fun tool. It's also linked on my, on my page on Plaid Online. So if you go to plaidonline.com slash flamingo toes, You'll see all the instruction, uh, well, not the instructions, but you'll see all the materials. And then there's also a link there to my blog post where I've got all the instructions. So if you missed anything, um, you can check out my blog post about how to make it. And then all the materials are easily linked for you there on Plaid Online. So we're going to, I need to cut one more of these. This is such a fun yarn. It's called, it's called a blanket yarn got it at um, Joann's, but it's super thick and super fuzzy. So what you want to do, and I'll hold this up for you guys, you want to lay these 
six strips in two groups of three, so three on top and three on bottom, just inside those narrow cutouts. So we're going to do that, and then we're going to start wrapping. And there's a really good instruction book that comes in the Raya tie, and it tells you how to make the yarn.